I've got a nice piece of land, prime real estate that is ready to be transformed into the most overbuilt bike wash I can imagine. And by God, we made this dream come true. And you can see by the dumb grin on my face how happy I am about it. But man, this was a tough project. Building this kind of deck is just, oh, it's maddening because everything needs to be plumb and level and square and flush and actually look straight and nothing ever quite does until you finally get the finishing touches on. And then by that point, you're like, all right, that's good. It's good enough. It's fine. It's one thing to build a 10 foot by 12 foot deck on a flat piece of land that isn't adjoining anything, but in the real world, we've got a slope, we've got a drop off, we're butted up against the wisteria trellis in the back, we're butted up against the nugatorium footing over on the right there. So the local lumber yard was really good with helping us out with, okay, if it's going to be 10 by 12 foot deck, this is how many joists you need, this is how much treated lumber you need, this is how many hangers you need, all that calculation we left to them. So then we just started framing it out just to kind of see where things would go and so we could still move it around before we poured concrete footings to hold everything in place. So once we felt pretty good about the placement of everything, we mixed up some concrete in this wheelbarrow here, dug a hole, and started throwing the concrete in. And basically these posts are what interfaces with the ground and the deck. So we put as many posts as we could all along the perimeter of the deck to keep it in place. It sure didn't feel this fast when we were doing it. Look at this, it's almost already done. So once the concrete for all the posts had cured, we drilled some big old holes inside the posts and then attached the deck to the posts using some big old lag bolts. Two of them for each post. With the foundation done, we started laying down the composite decking and just seeing what it would look like and how long it would be and just visualizing how it's gonna work. We went with Trex because it looks great and hopefully it'll last a long, long time. Maybe someday someone will be washing their hoverboard on this thing a hundred years from now. So the Trex boards have this little groove in them that allows you to use this clip system where you never have to drill into the actual decking. You just drill the clip into the underlying framing and then it clips in and then you push it in and it, it was a pretty cool process. We got it down after the first three or four boards and then you just have to do it like a hundred times. So the thing that turns this from a normal deck into a bike wash is the bike stand. And we're gonna make a bike stand out of pipe. So right here, I'm just kind of figuring out where does the pipe need to be, how high does it need to be, how far back does it need to be. The Ripmo is my longest, tallest, widest bike, so I know if it fits, everything else is going to fit just fine. And the pipe's pretty simple. We just bought three six-foot lengths of pipe. I think it was an inch and a quarter pipe, so it was a little thicker. I knew it could hold the weight of the bikes and not flex too much. And now the point of no return, drilling a couple holes in the deck for the pipe to slide into. And now we got to figure out how we're going to keep the pipe nice and secure so it won't flop around. So what I've failed to mention so far is the idea is for the pipe to be totally removable. So this could just become a deck and you don't have to worry about this permanent fixture that, you know, if somebody comes along down the line and doesn't have any desire to have a weird pipe bike wash in their backyard, no problem. You could take it out and, uh, it'll be fine. So we've got two big pipes below deck that will sit flush that you won't be able to see that will actually hold the bike stand pipe in place. Since we did some cutting on the pipes and they're going to be exposed to the elements, my dad thought it would be a good idea to hit it with some galvanized spray paint. We've got the pipe sleeve nice and flush up against the deck and then had to build a bunch of internal structure underneath the deck to be able to strap the pipe sleeve onto the wood and actually have everything be nice and secure and solid. Then we could finish putting in all the rest of the decking and just zip everything together and lock it in. At this point, it was looking super nice and we started to build up the railing around the deck, uh, you know, for safety purposes. My dad suggested we use this hog wire stuff for the railing around the deck and I really liked the way it came out. The railing was Pretty difficult actually, but the long and short of it was that we notched the hell out of every piece of wood. So you can see right here, we're using a dado blade to put a nice big notch in it, and that's where the railing would rest inside. And so every piece of wood that would touch railing had a notch in it like this. There was a lot more to this. There was a lot of getting everything square. There was a lot of big old lag screws going in to make sure the posts were tight and definitely mating the railing up with the deck and making sure all that is level and flush was a pretty, pretty tough job, but we got it done. 
So once we had the three dangerous sides of the deck made safe by this railing, we still had to do some finishing touches with some fascia board. If you notice right here in this shot down below, there's still kind of weird, exposed, ugly wood. So the fascia boards are going to take care of that. And ba-boom, there's the fascia boards. I think they look really nice. We always pre-drilled before we screwed in because these things are expensive as hell. And if you accidentally try to screw something in and you break something off or you split it or you scratch it, it, oh, it, it would just be so bad. So you, you pre-drill first to make it easier to screw in. So the initial bike stand height was about six feet. So I had my dad cut it down a foot and it made for the perfect height for getting the bikes in. So the genesis of this whole idea didn't come from wanting a bike wash. It actually came from wanting a bike stand and seeing the really awesome ones that they had in the Czech Republic that were made out of wood because I was like, oh man, if I could just get all my bikes out of the shed, you know, I have four bikes that get in the way when I'm working inside the shed. If I had a nice safe place to put them outside and just hang them up, I would feel so much better because normally I'm just laying them on the ground and uh, who knows what's going to happen. Scratch them up or you, you put it up against the shed and then a wind blows and it knocks it down. So this is just so much better than that. So we've got to turn this thing from just a bike stand into a full blown bike wash. And we've got a bunch of scrap wood with notches in it and an extra fascia board to use to build a box to hold all the bike wash tools. So I felt pretty smart that I actually spent a few minutes putting in all the bike wash stuff and laying it out and, and knowing that I would have the right size of box instead of building the box first and then trying to jam everything in. Boom, 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 shoot some screws in and you've got a box. Then we screwed in a nice little support board here into the side of the shed, and yes, it's leftover notched wood that we had lying around, but it worked. Then we screwed in a couple more support boards into the shed, and this thing is looking very, very stout. It is heavy duty. The next step was to add a couple cool gate hinges so we could put some doors on this thing and keep the weather out a little bit. We will need to add a roof to this thing because water's just gonna pool on the top if we don't, but that, that'll come later. It's not gonna rain till October around here. We added a little strip of pegboard up at the top so we could hang the brushes up there, and then everything else is just gonna be miscellaneous storage space. And finally, the victory lap, the first wash in what I'm calling the pig pen. So I came up with the idea, but my dad had the real know-how to make all this happen, all the right tools, all the experience. So big shout out to BKXC Senior for making this all come together and just another super awesome project that we're able to do together and have this video and share it. And it'll be, you know, a little piece of our scrapbook for a hundred years to come, as long as YouTube's still around. And of course, this is just the 1.0 version. I'm sure we will come up with some innovative things. Even after the first wash, I started to realize a couple things that I would need. Like some way to put these wheels up and mount them while I'm washing them would be super cool. You never intend to start working on your bike when you wash it, but you see something that's weird and you start taking things apart and then you almost accidentally drop the derailleur hanger bolt right through the bottom of the deck because there's a small gap between all the decking. So uh, maybe I need a little a mat or maybe like a tool caddy or something to, to help me not drop something down below the deck. I am super stoked on this thing. I'm so glad I'm gonna be able to get the bikes out of the shed and just leave them off to the side or get a nice wash in when it's needed. I am grateful to have you guys here supporting me, making this channel happen, whether all you do is leave a like or a comment or join me on Patreon. It's what makes this channel work. Thanks for watching, you guys. I'll see you on the trail.